let's talk about algebra tiles or by another name, algebra blocks. The first thing you need to know about algebra tiles is that they are rectangular and they're based on the area of rectangles. So every block has two dimensions, a width and a length, and an area. The dimensions are going to be the factors of a quadratic most of the time. And the area is the product of those factors. That's the actual quadratic. Now when we use algebra tiles like this green, red, and yellow figure to the right, the dimensions are going to look something like this. We have a variable expression and a variable expression, often binomials like that. But what's the area going to be? Well, it's really just the sum of all those parts. Let's look at an example. If I have a diagram like this, let's talk about all the parts of this diagram. The large square is an x by x squared. The area then must be x squared if you multiply those together. The rectangles that you see have the same length as that square, so they are each x by 1. The area of those is x. I'm going to erase the dimension right here because it's already off to the side, right over here. So all of these have an area of x, x times 1 every time. Okay, and this one also has an area of x. But what about those little squares? Remember, the rectangle has, a, has dimensions of 1 by x, so those little squares must be 1 by 1. Their area is 1. To label the final drawing, since all of these have a length of 1 each, the total length of this side is what you get when you collect like terms. I only have one x, but I have six of those units. And on the other side, we have x plus 1. This is a correctly labeled diagram, but I also want an equation for every problem. Here's how you write that. First, you write the factors, which are the length and width. x plus 1 times x plus 6. The order does not matter here. The product is the area of the entire drawing. You can just collect like terms of all the areas, so x squared plus We've got 7x's plus 6 little squares. And that is how you draw a diagram and label it correctly. Let's try another problem. Okay, now we're given the quadratic and we want to try to make a diagram that represents this picture. We start with the x squared up here in the corner. There's a few ways that we could add on those 5x's. Remember, we have three parts to every diagram. We can have x squareds, which is a large square, and we have some of these rectangles that are the same length as that x squared, and then we have some little squares that are the same width as that rectangle. In other words, they line up like this. If this is an x squared, an x by 1 rectangle lines up right there, same length and a 1 by 1 square would fit right here with the same width. And that's how they fit together. We always want to make a rectangle, though, out of these pictures. And the rectangles form four quadrants most of the time. The x squared blocks all go up here. There can be more than one of them. And the little 1 squares go down here. And they just touch right there. In the other two quadrants is where we put lots of these. There could be some there, there could be some there. Okay, that's just what kind of shapes go in which quadrants. So here's the strategy I'm going to use. After I draw my x squared tile, there's only one in this case because this is 1x squared, imagine that there is a region here that's filled up by these six unit squares. They have to form a rectangle. So there's only two ways to make a rectangle with an area of 6. If 6 is the product, you either get it from 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. So in that area, I'm either going to have a long bar of little ones that looks like this, or I'm going to have a 2 by 3 rectangle down in that corner. Let's see what that would look like. 
You can do the two and the three in either direction for this particular diagram. I'm going to go this way. So there's two. Okay, so it's one of these two situations, or maybe it's both. Let's find out. To fill in the rest of the rectangle, first you complete the outline of the rectangle, and then you see how many X rectangles would fit. To do that, you extend the lines that are already there. So all those little lines between my unit blocks are going to be extended up through that blank area. Since it's just one row of blocks, I don't have any horizontal lines to extend. Now let's write in the areas of all those rectangles. They're all x by 1, so that's x, that's x, that x, x, and x, and x. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's my 6 1 blocks. So how many x blocks did I end up having? I've got 7 x's there. That is not what's in my expression, so this is incorrect. That is not the answer. Let's see if the other one works better. Start with the little one blocks. Remember I have six one blocks, but this time I arranged them in a two by three arrangement. Extend the lines that were already started between those blocks. And I've got one that's horizontal this time also. All the rectangles we just drew are all one by X. So they all have an area of X. And now I have five of them. So this is the correct drawing. Let's finish the labels. On this side, if we combine like terms, remember this is the short side of all those X rectangles. There are only one each across that side, and this is X. So all together we have X plus three on that side. And on the other side, I've got X plus two, because these are one each right there. So those are the dimensions. To write our equation, we write those as a product and collect like terms in all those areas to see if we got the right answer. We have one X squared block, we have five X rectangles, and we also have six of those little unit squares. And that matches our original problem, so this is the correct answer. You can also get the answer by using the distributive property, or as some people call it, the FOIL method. That should come out the same as the diagram, and you need to know how to do this both ways eventually. Let's try one more example. Remember, it always has to be a rectangle. It can't be some crazy L-shaped composite area thing. It has to be a rectangle. This time I have two X squared, so let's start with that. The only way to arrange two x squareds is side by side or up and down, and it doesn't really matter which way you start with. I'm just gonna do them side by side. Remember that those unit blocks are gonna go in some rectangular shape over here. I've got three. Well, if a product is three, there's only one way to get it, right? One times three. So now I have some choices that are different. I could either do one by three this way so that it sticks out sideways, or I could do one by three this way. One of those is going to make seven X bars and the other one probably isn't. So let's see which way it will work. First, let's try the horizontal one. Remember to extend the lines between the unit squares and also the large squares that are X squared each. So in this case, I have an X rectangle here and here and also I have three of them here, and then these are all my ones. So altogether, how many X rectangles did this produce? This produced five of them. That is not correct, so this is not the answer that I want. Let's finish it with the vertical arrangement instead and see what happens. So we've got two X squared side by side again, and this time we're gonna arrange our three units this way. Now finish the rectangle and see what happens. That's already an X by one rectangle, but we need some lines in this other region, so I, I have to extend that line and extend all the horizontal lines between those unit tiles. Okay, that's the rest of my X blocks. Let's see how many we made. I see six here and one over here, so that's seven X's altogether. It looks like we did it right this time. 
let's add more labels. I've labeled all the areas of the tiles, but let's label the dimensions. Remember, even though that's an x squared tile, the length of one side is just x. So that's x plus x plus 1. 2x plus 1 on that side. In the other direction, I have x plus 3. OK, now let's write an equation. x plus 3 times 2x plus 1. 2x squareds this time, and 7x's, and 3 of those little unit squares. And that matches my original problem, so this is correct. Remember the key right here. Whatever that constant term is that you have to build the rectangle of unit squares out of, that makes a mini rectangle within the big rectangle. So you always want to think of it as a product and break it down into factor pairs. That gives you a list of things to try. In this case, 1 times 3 was the only possibility, but there were two ways to draw a 1 by 3 rectangle, so I tried them both. So the basic strategy that I showed you was first draw the large squares like this and then arrange a rectangle of small squares whose product is this number. Remember those only touch by this little intersection point right here. They are opposite quadrants of the drawing. Then extend the lines from that rectangle to form two other rectangles in the other quadrants. Those will be 1 by x each, and so then you count those to see if they came out to be the right amount. If it's not the right amount, it's not the right diagram. So try it a different way. That should get you started.